well. So thanks very much, Paul, for joining us this morning to, to share your thoughts with the students. We appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Um, so good morning to you all. Um, I'll, I'll kick off straight away and um, set my timer so that I, I won't overcook it. Um, uh, it's it's a pleasure to be uh, to be sort of uh, you know talking to students. Um, I think one of the things that I always enjoyed uh, throughout my career um, at Class Nevin, which really goes back um, over forty years, uh, was dealing with students. They were sort of you know they were the thing that saved me every year when you had this bunch of fresh blood coming in uh, to the environs of uh, Glass Nevin and and the other places I managed as well. Um, uh, I, I would say uh, that, uh, you know, the, you are in the best possible career. I've always said that to students. And I mean that, you know, if you want to be an astronaut, you go and do that or something in medicine, you can do that or deep research, you can do that as well. Um, but Gardening and horticulture and being in that plant environment, I always say to people, it will never fail you and it will never let you down. And it's always one of those careers that I found picked me up and other people tell me it picked them up as well uh, and moved them along very nicely. And the possibilities for you are endless. Now, this morning, I'm going to run through a few, uh, a few of the, the, the things that I've been asked to highlight. Um, and obviously, I'm going to talk to you about uh, working in the Office of Public Works, um, which is where I ended up. I'll give you a brief kind of roadmap to how I got there. Um, I want to talk to you about your transition from that college, that environment where you're, I suppose, born into the, the real world of horticulture. Not that you have not been in it and you've certainly been out there, but there is a, there is a difference. I want to talk to you about further education. Um, and fulfilling yourselves as quality gardeners. Um, and then being a gardener essentially in the Office of Public Works and your career progression within that. Now you've all got a, a great grounding because I know the training that you get and I know the tu tutors and lecturers and all that support structure you've had around you have really imparted the very best of everything uh, to you. It might be a bit of a jumble and a bit of a mumble and it's all there in the notes and oh I remember that and gosh I think I've forgotten that um, but it's all there and that is all within your recall. Um, I started studying I suppose a way way back in 1971. Um, that's probably a date you remember from the history books um because certainly you know it is a while it is a while ago and the training was essentially uh, the the same broadly speaking um but it is something that stayed with me um uh, always and forever and so should it uh, with you too um working in the environs of the national botanic gardens is is where i i, I started essentially after i graduated from college at glass nevin i worked in trinity college botanic gardens for a while um, and then back to glass nevin and um they were the the best days i suppose as a gardener and eventually going through all of the ranks um, and up along and ending in the role of curator was something that on day one starting out I didn't have that plan it came my way um, and I was very very blessed and, 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 and very sort of well kind of the benefits were, were huge to me uh, one of the things that uh, I, I, I say to all students you know plants are important um, although I'm reading an article at the moment where uh, in, in this month's plant review which is the Royal Horticultural Society um, publication that says plants aren't the be all and end all of gardens hmm, which is quite interesting I thought and I've got to chew that further to see uh, what I get out of that um, it is talking about gardening and horticulture being a fine art and there's more to it than just one element but plants are important if there was no plants on this world we live on we would not be here simple fact if we weren't here, the plants would exist. It might be chaotic. It might be sort of 
riotous that they would survive. And it'd be a very, very interesting place, I would imagine. Now you put the gardener in there in the middle of all of that and gardening uh, is what we do and gardening is about control. One basic thing I always say to students, day one, lesson one, gardening is about control. Um, having managed night classes for adults at glass level for over 10 years, I think, um, the, on the very first um, module, as they came in, we had a big red slide on the board with in yellow across it saying control. And it sat there while everybody was settling down and everyone thought it was sort of something wrong with the computer package I was using until I explained that this is what it was all about. And any question you have about gardening comes back to one element of using control. Um, so always remember that. Uh, I think uh, if something goes wrong in, in a gardening project, and things have gone wrong in a gardening project, one of the questions I would always ask is, how was your control in that situation? How was your control in that environment? And do you need to change it or alter it? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So bear that in mind without plants we would not we would not exist and certainly gardeners have a huge job of work to do um, because the human race is probably the most destructive race on this earth we live in and uh, the more gardeners become influential and and you know create environments where people can relax and be happy and refresh themselves um, uh, the better uh, so you've you've gone through your your college years, and um, I have had the, the 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 very very good fortune at Glasnevin to talk to students on the day they arrived. And for some of the Glasnevin people, if you're there, I can't see all of you, but uh, I may have spoken to you, or I may not. But and certainly on the day they graduate, you graduate. Um, I would have on occasion spoken as well in, in place of uh, our director. And um, one of the things I said the very first time um, that uh, I spoke, it came as a shock to the audience and their parents that were there. I said, now you are only starting to learn. Uh, and there was a hushed silence in the room and some mouths were open looking at me and they were kind of thinking, does he not know we've been here for three years and we have been uh, studying? Um, but as you get into horticulture, and this is why uh, it is so beneficial and so good for you, uh, is that you continue to learn. Things change. The climate varies. The soil changes. And you're always trying to work with as best you can what is around you. So that is the start of your, your, your next learning uh, phase. You have been in a college environment, um, although it's, I suppose in, in many respects, it's been a different college environment. It's been a different world um, for us all. Um, uh, but nonetheless, uh, you know, you progress now on to what is uh, the, the, the great wider world and whether you should choose to work in Ireland or work abroad or somewhere else, things basically stay the same. As part of my career, uh, the OPW at the time facilitated my request to um, go to Kew Gardens in London and study botanic garden management uh, with a, an international group of people. And um, on the very first day, we were all asked to make a presentation and particularly focus on the difficulties we were having in managing a plant collection within a botanic garden. Um, there was somebody there from every continent. Um, uh, and each one spoke, and I was amazed at this, about the same issues and the same problems they were having. There was a familiarity uh, within the group. So, you know, the same problems will be the same wherever you go. Like, obviously, I'm going to talk to you about working within the Office of Public Works, and um, which, you know, I think is, 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 is a, was a tremendous place to work in. But just bear that in mind. One of the things that I will say you need to do absolutely is read and research continually. 
um, I would guide you towards uh, Royal Horticultural Society publications, the things like the Irish Garden Plant Society newsletter, gardening magazines, um, and, and, and continue to update your knowledge and learn. Because one of the things you will find as, as uh, emerging gardeners <clears throat> is that there is a raft of nasty things uh traveling through our northern hemisphere now to infect and invade and chew and destroy um and we need to be able to adapt and uh, learn how to control and manage these things uh, um, and that is vitally important so don't just put the books away now uh, don't put the notepads away you might want to because you probably haven't had enough of them but read on a continual basis use the internet and that's pretty okay but there's a, an awful lot of muck and garbage that you'll find there uh, and sometimes that really throws you off go back to good texts the whole time use the libraries use you know things that come if you can get to glass to the wonderful library that is there use that so you know try to stay you know out of social media getting your facts and, and go to extremely good text. So continue the research and continue updating yourselves to become a better uh, horticulturist, gardener, um, or, or whatever it is you, you, you choose to be. Um, I think the, the um, feeling that I got as a student, and I think every student at Glasnevin moving on, uh, from the, their, their college course is that it can be lonely out there. Um, you know, it, you move into uh, away from your, 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 your student colleagues, um, but it's good to keep networking and to build uh, little groups around you that you've confidence in, uh, strike up relationships with gardeners in, in Irish horticulture um, and people who, you know, are knowledgeable, are enthusiastic. Enthusiastic people are, are the thing that you, you live off quite easily um, and well. Um, so your further education is, is, uh, is extremely important uh, to you. Uh, so, you know, uh, don't uh, forget that. I'm not going to, I'm not using any PowerPoint this morning. I have notes uh, on a sheet of paper here that I used to use to talk to students all those years ago. Um, I have retired now with two years um, and um, building a garden in County Wexford. So, um, you know, the, the bug never leaves you. Uh, so to speak. Um, out there in the world, being a gardener, uh, it's a performance. Um, you know, it's, it might be difficult sometimes, the weather mightn't be in your favor, but what you're, what you're doing is a performance. And it's, an, it's a performance that transforms people. It's uh, people watch you, people look at you. As you do, as you do your work, I know um, at Glasnevin, for example, um, I know some of my colleagues in Dublin City Council. You know, when they're when they're sort of planting a traffic island, talk about the great chats they have with people stuck in cars in traffic. Um, and I've watched this myself. You know, if you watch traffic coming the other direction, almost everybody looks at the planting because green and that green environment is something that totally calms you down. Um, the job that I did at Glasnell, and particularly the, in, in my role as curator, um, <clears throat> could be highly charged at times. And um, one of the things that, I, that, you know, things got so bad one day that I went off out into the gardens and I walked around and I came back a different person. Um, that was one of the occasions I really appreciated how good and beneficial plants are and the work that gardeners do. So be mindful that when you're out there, you are creating opportunity for people. You are creating something that people will get benefit from. So, you know, your part is this, that whole kind of curative um, process that, you know, you're, you, are, you are providing uh, for people. Uh, you know, always work sort of to that end in a professional manner as well. People watch, uh, you know, and if somebody see you digging a hole 
you know, with a, a tablespoon, you know, they will say, oh, well, I saw the gardeners in that garden I visited today doing that, and that must be fine to do it. You know, you must be professional and use, uh, uh, you know, use uh, your, your skill that you now have appropriately. Um, and um, never lose an opportunity to give somebody the right steer, um, as as um, as we call it. Uh, I know from from um, our, our, myself and my wife Edel's work here in 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 uh, Ballygarrett. Uh, you know, when we started restoring a garden here twelve years ago, people just blindly went by and didn't bother what we were doing and thrashing and chainsawing and but when we started planting and laying out the ground the tractor drivers that used to just drive by over hedge height just looking straight at the road it, it stopped and they're all looking left now uh, as they pass the garden and you kind of think that they are taking something away i'm charmed with what i'm doing but they actually are benefiting as well so when I say gardening is a performance, it is a performance. And, you know, just don't let that become the main thing for you. Uh, just be mindful that I'm making a difference to somebody, you know. And in the days when you're up to your knees and muck, you're wet, you're cold, your coffee break was a half an hour ago, you are you feel you're not a performance artist, but you are in actual fact. So we carry that one uh, with you as well. Um, just to move on um, to, um, sorry, I'm just checking the time, just moving on to working within the Office of Public Works, which was what came to um, my attention in the email from Yvonne. Um, and uh, the Office of Public Works is huge. The Office of Public Works gets a lot of flack, sometimes rightly so, uh, and other times not at all warranted. Um, you're in a huge organization within the Office of Public Works. Um, but the one thing I say to every new staff member uh, coming to work in the Office of Public Works is you are being hired for you. You're not being hired to do what the Office of Public Works wants you to do the way the Office of Public Works wants it done. Now, the Office of Public Works mightn't like me saying that. But you're hired for your talent and you bring your talent with you um, you bring all of the enthusiasm with you um, and you you know you get into that system and you benefit the system as well as those that work, work, watch the performance that you um, are doing on a daily basis excuse me it's just water no gin this morning um, so um, the the um, that's what you're there for. So, as I said, it's the structure within it is pretty much the same um, in horticulture. Now, there's, I won't go into all of the various sides of the Office of Public Works, uh, flooding, you know, um, estate portfolio management. Um, but the bit that we were in is historic properties and they manage all the historic properties. And within that, horticulture is managed as well. Um, so, you know, sort of you've got the general operative grade, you've got, and what we find now is a lot of graduates go in at general operative grade because they get the experience of that grade that when they come for interview at the craft gardener grade there on the money, uh, and you can work your way all the way up the route that I went, um, uh, but there was only one of me, so not everybody can get there um, uh, unless we live forever. Um, which we don't, um, but that is the structure within the within the Office of Public Works itself. And again, in that, uh, you will find that the, you will find individuals. And I remember in my formative years as, as a craft gardener um, and even at Trinity College as well, I won absolutely incredibly brilliant uh, supervisor that literally I was soaking information out. I didn't know it at the time, but I, I've still notes that he made me write down I, and I can still refer to them. Um, that man's name was Dennis McKennedy. And I was very sorry to leave and move to Glasnevin because Glasnevin was where I was sort of, uh, I won't say born into horticulture, but that happened at the knee of my mom and dad. 
Um, but that's where I, I, I started the journey of learning and I wanted to get back there and, and I did. But even then there were people all around me uh, that gave me information or said to me, look, that's nonsense. I wouldn't be doing that. And don't be talking like that. No, no, stick to stick to what you know. Don't add an extra bit of sulfate of ammonia. Uh, you know, and there were people that sort of said, okay, you know, uh, and you move on from there. I think in all of, 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 of the things of horticulture that I've said to you about plants and, uh, you know, the importance of them and us not being here and all of that, that's important. One of the things I would say uh, is that uh, you listen um, and listening is difficult for some people and you have to learn how to listen um, but when you're in horticulture and when you're there with your colleagues and when you're there with your supervisors and when you're there with the higher echelons of the office of public work you have to listen and that doesn't matter where you are at all uh, in what side part of horticulture you know if you run a garden center you have to listen and you have to listen very very carefully i see dermot there if you're a garden designer you absolutely have to listen um you know and take stuff away and sort of build on that and take what you can out of that in terms of learning for yourself and being able to say to somebody well i might just want to shift your emphasis now slightly in this direction and uh uh, you know, that might be ben benefit you, you better. But listen at every stage. I still listen. Um, a woman put her head over our gate, socially distanced, during last week. Uh, and she really wanted a bit of information about Camasia because she'd seen something that was in the paper about us. And listening to her, you know, I, I finally came around to... Um, you know the impression of really what she wanted us to do was maybe go and do a bit of garden design for her uh you know so we kind of <laughs> reverse out of there quite nicely but listening is a great skill and, and very very important um so um getting in getting to the a lot of people say oh god i could never work within uh within uh, government department I could never work in the environment of the office of public works. I could never work in, in the environment. And it is it is it is a challenging environment, but very, very rewarding if you just take those few directions that I gave you in terms of being your own person, listening to what's around you, doing the best you can, uh, bringing your talent, say, I see that I see the way that's been. Many is the time somebody has said, you've been doing this for years what about and and sometimes this comes from students i say to students you're here to learn but you're here to bring your talent if you see anything happening here that you think could be done better say it the students have said well what about why would you not i remember my grandfather telling me would you was it brilliant idea so that continues all of the time you would be working in somewhere like the office of public works uh, and that is um and that that is you being beneficial to the organization that you're that you're working for. Um, I've spoken about the the sort of the Office of Public Works. I've interviewed for, I would say, all of my years as a curator and certainly a lot of my years as foreman. So the vast majority of, of, of horticulture people within the Office of Public Works now I would have interviewed, would have had the pleasure of interviewing them and the great even the greater pleasure of being part of the, the 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 group of people that that selected them um so i know the pain and i know the anguish um that sort of you know uh, goes with with interviews and, and interviewing people um and your way into the office of public works um is by means of interview um everybody uh nobody enjoys interviews um interviews are you know kind of they're they're challenging they can a lot of people think they're confrontational which they're not um the one thing i've always said to people people co would come to me just looking for a bit of advice before an interview um now it may be the case that i would say well hold on a second now i'm on that interview board so um, I might not be the one to talk to, but go out and talk to X, Y, or Z. But sometimes if I wasn't the one doing that, 
I would give them one piece of advice. And usually there's three people sitting at the other side of the table and there's one person when sometimes will be an assistant or a translator or a sign reader um, sitting at the other side of the table. Everybody in that room is anxious. Everybody in that room is nervous. Everybody in that room wants to do a good job. The people interviewing have a huge responsibility to be fair um, and to deal every deal with everybody uh, the same. Uh, you know, there's one structure of questions that everybody is asked, um, and the person in doing the interviewing, and this has happened to us, uh, where somebody comes back and they will say, "I don't think I've been fairly treated um, for this reason." Uh, and you've got to be very careful that you go back and look at your notes, your own notes that you've taken on, on the day of the interview, and look and see, is what that person said justified? Uh, so that's how fair it actually is. I recall one time somebody at an interview saying, you just don't want to give me the job. And we were all quite taken aback with that. And the chairman of the, the, the panel said, I think we'll take a short break. And uh, the chairman stayed in the room with the interviewee uh, and said, you know, I need to take a few notes on why you arrived at that decision, that statement, that comment. What did we say? And once that was squared, we went back again uh, afterwards. Interviews are not really about giving correct answers to questions. Interviews are about a conversation. And the more you draw out of people in a conversational way, uh, the better picture you get uh, of the candidate sitting in front of you. Um, one of the things that I did really from the off when I was interviewing was I brought um, maybe seven or eight plants with me in a vase uh, to, the, to the interview. It, it actually took a while for the Office of Public Works to allow me to do that about three weeks because I convinced them fairly quickly. I just, just said, watch how this works and I put them there. And, um, and on the very first day, sort of the, the chairman of the interview said, well, the interview board said, you'd have to write down all the names then because how will I know? I said, well, you know, you don't actually need to know. Um, I said, you know, but I'll write them down for you. And I wrote them down and I explained that I don't actually expect these people to know the names of these plants. I just, what's the purpose of them then? The purpose of them really was to see how they interacted with them. Some would come in and they'd take them out of the vase, they'd pull them asunder, they'd smell the leaves, and they'd say, I haven't a clue what this is, I've never come across this, and they'd put it back in the vase. That's the right answer. Somebody would come in and give you the name of it like that. That's the right answer. But the other one was a better answer. They didn't know the answer. So, you know, something like that is what's drawing people out. The best ever was when you ask somebody at the end, uh, have you any questions? Uh, somebody who didn't know half of the plants said, could you give me the names of the plants I didn't know the name of? Now that person went straight to the top of that list because what we were looking for was interest and enthusiasm. Somebody that comes in and goes, oh, I'm not great on plants, really probably might be better not interviewing for the Office of Public Works. Um, you need to know about the institution you're going, it doesn't matter where you go to work or where you do an interview for, you need to know about it. You need to know how old it is. The Office of Public Works goes back to 1831. You need to have all that on the tips of your fingers. Um, you need to be able to talk about that. Uh, you need to understand sort of the ethos. You need to understand if, you're, if it's the botanic garden you're going for. And I suppose the most embarrassing time interviewing, you know, for candidates right across all the OPW sites, as we did on many occasions, was uh, people were asked to state their choice of where they wanted to work. And almost without fail, every single, body, every single candidate at the National Botanic Gardens. Um, and, uh, and then we had to fight and share them out at, at, at the very end. So know where, sort of, you know, know all there is to know about it um, and ask for feedback uh, afterwards because an interview is a learning curve. 
Um, just sort of, you know, if you have any questions on that, I can take them. Uh, the other thing that I would say is, again, about op the opportunity for further progression within anywhere. You have inward, upward, uh, you have outward, you know, if you want to move on and, and go elsewhere. Um, the, the one thing I will say, and I can say this from experience dealing with um, staff at last level, Kilmacara, John F. Kennedy Arboretum and uh, St. Andrews Park and, and Rathfarnham as well, which was for a short period of time, but I absolutely loved being there, I have to say. Uh, largely speed, there, there wasn't a great plant collection there, but gosh, the passion of the, the staff that worked there uh, and the interaction with, uh, there was times when I thought the visitors were actually the staff. Uh, they were so familiar with people and, and uh, it was a lovely, lovely environment. And again, it was all part of that being a gardener and giving benefits and bringing people in and sort of horticulturally hugging them, if you like. Uh, that, that, that was so good. But as you progress up the lines, uh, you know, say, you know, the craft gardener becomes a charge hand, you become more sort of, there's more paperwork i suppose there's more admin when you become a foreman it's kind of pretty much admin um and uh, at the level i was at it was literally everything um that that is there so you and what i did in actual fact i was lucky enough to live in botanic gardens as the curator so myself and Edel built a garden there and that was my savior evenings and, and weekends and um leaving it all behind going into retirement uh, do i miss it gosh i miss it but i don't notice it if i do uh, because we're we're doing what i've done since i was a toddler and that was play with with, with a wheelbarrow a spade soil plants seeds bulbs eat veg haven't grown grown them um and that sort of is is um my advice my top tips, my, you know, the bits that I think um, should benefit you and wish you very, very well in your career um, uh, and, and keep it up and never, never leave it uh, and always be, you know, charmed by it. That's, e that's the easy bit. But research, 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 read, 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 study, 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 talk to people and listen. Thank you very much.